here with basketballnews.com, like you mentioned. In that most recent mock, you guys have the Pelicans taking Moses Moody. Uh, why do you have Moody there? Is there any particular reason why you like him? Is it a fit with the Pelicans? Is it just the fact that he's you know, the 10th best player available? Yeah, so not only do we like him, uh, I also believe that New Orleans likes him. I think a lot of teams in that top 10 are going to be looking at Moody. Um, and I think he's a fit. He's a wing defender. He's a wing shooter. You know, not the greatest initia uh, initiator or creator in the draft. But again, a, a 6'5 without shoes, long arm, seven foot wingspan, and a guy who, you know, even though he struggled in the NCAA tournament uh, late, later in the season, I think he's a guy who's going to get buckets at the NBA level. And at 10, you know, there's going to be quite a bit of movement in the top 10 in the lottery. I expect two, three, maybe four picks to get traded in that top 14. Um, I, I, we're unsure right now if New Orleans will keep their 10th pick, but Moody is a guy that if he's there, I would fully expect them to target um, he or Kispert, I believe, are kind of the two at the front of that conversation. So uh, we've heard a lot of different names while they are at the, the front of the conversation. We've heard a lot of different names as well, um, and, and we'll get into that. But are you the one who puts the, the mock together? Do you work with Matt on that? How does that, how does that work out? Did, did you make the decision ultimately to put Moody at 10? And is there any specific reason why? I know we just kind of alluded to that, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, can, we can't get into like too much of the exactly how we do it, but a lot of during the season, uh, it is like based on what we would do at this given pick. Like if we were putting this team's hat on. Now that we're a week out, we do update it to a little bit more predictive of this is what we are hearing around the league and this is what we believe will happen. So uh, at this point when we were doing this mock draft, Moody and Kispert was a conversation. You know, based on the board, um, for people who do have the mock pulled up, you know, uh, Book Knight, Barnes, Kaminga, Wagner, those guys are all kind of gone right before 10. So you get into the conversation of Moody, Kispert, um, you know, Isaiah Jackson doesn't feel like a fit with the athletes you guys have down low. Kai Jones doesn't feel like a fit based on what you have. And Giddy, you know, Giddy is definitely a conversation. He has a lot of top 10 love right now. Uh, I don't expect him to be on the board long. But again, in this mock, we kind of looked at each other and said, okay, I think, you know, if I'm the Pelicans, you know, Moody is certainly where, where I'm doing uh, – or where I'm going right now, and that's what the talk is as well. So right now, the Pelicans, obviously, there's been talk of them going for a trade. You know, Damian Lillard is always a conversation on Pell's Twitter at the very least. And if they hold on to the pick with, with the Moses Moody, what they're probably – I'd assume that they're going to want to go for is a, you know, a three and D sort of player Moody who can well hopefully be a tertiary scorer behind Brandon Ingram and, and Zion. And you think the same thing about book night and I don't know, I'm not necessarily a Franz Wagner, but we'll, we'll talk about him as well. Um, can, can Moody be that level of scorer in the league? Can he be a tertiary option behind Zion and, and uh, Brandon Ingram? I think he can turn into one, uh, maybe not as a like a ball handler, but as an off like a secondary creator. I think he can. Like you're not going to have him run a bunch of pick and rolls all the time, but he's a guy who in spots this year at Arkansas showed he could get his own shot. You know, he's got really nice jab steps, can create space. You know, didn't finish at the rim very well at all, but he could get there. So he's a guy who's like tools. I believe in. Um, whose work ethic I believe in. Again, never going to be a primary ball handler, primary scorer by any means, um, but a guy off the ball, he's not, he's more than just a catch and shoot guy, which I think in a young prospect is really valuable. And he was in a primary sort of, uh, I, mean, I guess his role offensively was was off ball. Is that correct in, in Arkansas? Wasn't that what he did? Yeah, Jalen Tate and a couple other guys really handled the on-ball responsibilities. Arkansas, you know, he was running all kind of actions off screens all over the floor and would occasionally get to create for himself off the dribble. But that really wasn't his role very much. They kind of had it. They had him off ball um, almost specifically, you know, solely the entire season. So now the main comp that a lot of people are making, and, and some people love it, some people hate it, some people love it just because of the the frame and what they hope that that uh, Moody can be, but it's Mikhail Bridges, right? I've, I've heard that um, a lot, probably because they're both slight, probably because they're both incredibly long. Um, is that a fair comp? Do, do you like comps when, when, you're, when you're doing draft evaluation? So I personally, I do. I stay as far away from comps, as I can. <laughs> not, not because I think they're bad. Like I do think they're helpful. You know, um, it's one of the reasons that on our draft page we use potential roles 
uh, instead of necessarily comp, comp. So like for Moody, the three roles, we give him shooter, mid-range game, and defender, because those I think the three things you're going to get out of him. Um, he is not the defender that Bridges was at Villanova. I don't think he, he'll be the defender that Bridges is now. Um, if, if I think I would be comfortable saying that. Um, again, Bridges was, <laughs> Bridges was underrated coming out of his draft, but – to that point, I do think that's why Moody is being coveted pretty highly, even with the struggles as he slipped down boards at the end of the year. You know, when it really comes crunch time, okay, we really do actually like what Moody is, and that's why I think we're kind of seeing him rise back up after everybody's, like, had the pre-draft process, the workouts, interviews, all that stuff. So uh, style of play, the role, yes, I do think he'll play a similar role to Bridges. Uh, I just think Bridges is really, really, really good, and that at least – you know, going to the finals, being that kind of player, that's tough to kind of project Moody as right now. So is he essentially what you're looking at when you when you draft Moody? Is it is it the three and D kind of guy? Is that what you're what you're hoping for with Moody or what you're looking towards? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Again, three and D is a phrase that I think is widely overused by a lot of the media because if you better be a really good defender if I'm gonna give you that title. Moody is right there. I'm comfortable giving him the three and D title, even or I guess not title, but you know that <laughs> guy that uh, I guess that description uh, because I do think he'll be that kind of three point shooter, and he does have the tools to be that defender. So he's right on the cusp uh, on the defensive side. But yeah, I consider him one of maybe you know the three or four guys in this class that I would give the three and D uh, name to. I know a lot of people like him at ten, uh, and he's been around that. 8, 9, 10 spot. I've seen him going, I think, as high as 7 to the Warriors. 